Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Mohammed Abu Naga, Azhar Dumiat. His talk, uh, Iliac Artery Pseudoaneurysm in Behcet's Disease, Incidents and Failing to Succeed. Thank you. Welcome. I'm Mohamed Abu Naga, Vascular Fellowship Trainee at Al Azhar University Hospital, Dumiat and I'll present a case in the title of Iliac Artery Pseudoaneurysm in Behcet's Disease. Our objectives today to define Behcet's disease, to know its pathophysiology, and how to diagnose general rules of its treatment, and we'll present our case. Behcet's disease is a multi-system vascular inflammatory disorder of unknown etiology, with male predominance between 20 to 40 years of age. It affects the venous rather than arterial side. Arterial disease mostly aneurysm and rarely thrombotic occlusion. The commonly affected arteries are abdominal aorta, pulmonary artery, iliac arteries, femoral, popliteal, and carotid arteries. Its pathogenesis is not actually clear. It may be in cellular damage rather than hypercoagulability. Actually, most of our cases present to vascular clinic was uh, previously diagnosed by rheumatologist using symptomatic triad of pest disease, uh, oral abscess ulcer, genital ulcer, or ocular lesion. So the definitive diagnosis is based on this clinical symptoms and signs. Pest disease has no specific diagnostic test. In case of peripheral arterial involvement, presentation usually uh, with pulsatile mass, which may be painful, leg pain, claudication, digital ulcer, or distal edema. To investigate the basic disease, we usually use the duplex ultrasound or CT angiography to diagnose a vascular basic. There are many treatment options. Immunosuppressive with or without glucocorticoid addition is the mainstay of treatment of vascular basic disease. In case of venous thrombosis or intracardiac thrombosis, anticoagulation addition may be beneficial. Otherwise, anticoagulation in vascular basic disease is still an issue of debate. Endovascular option as a treatment modality for vascular pest may be beneficial and may prevent complication or avoid complication of surgical intervention like anastomotic dehiscence or pseudoaneurysmic recurrence at the anastomotic site. According to our organization uh, experience, we have a sixth patient uh, and we will present their cases on our uh, review article about vascular pest disease. One of these cases are Egyptian male patient, 35 years old, with a good general condition. His chief complaint is painful pulsating swelling at the right groin, and also his complaining of swelling at the right lower limb. His condition started eight, month, eight months before presentation at the vascular clinic with insidious onset and progressive course. He was diagnosed as a by duplex ultrasound as external iliac pseudoaneurysm or n with no signs of acute or chronic ischemia. He was previously diagnosed by his rheumatologist as a pest disease 15 years ago on glucocorticoids and colchicine, but the patient was not compliant, he was not hypertensive nor diabetic with no history of vascular trauma or no family history of pested disease. After examination, we have a 5 cm pulsating mass at the right groin and iliac region with absent right common, f common femoral pulsation and edible per we. We have no anterior tibial or posterior tibial pulsation, no palpable right popliteal artery pulsation, and no sensory nor motor loss at the lower limb. Laboratory investigation was normal. And radiological investigation show external iliac artery pseudoaneurysm 5 by 7 cm with monophasic SFA, popliteal, anterior tibial, and posterior tibial. CT angiography show right external iliac artery pseudoaneurysm, and the rest of vascular system was normal. As we show, right external iliac artery pseudoaneurysm. This picture to show the marvelous collaterals. So the decision was surgical exploration pre-operative preparation, pseudoaneurysmic excision, and interposition graft with a synthetic PTF ring at 6 mm from right external iliac to right common femoral with technical clinical radiological success. This is anastomosis with external iliac and anastomosis with right common femoral, and this is the net result. Post-operative antibiotic and platelet anticoagulation and corticosteroid and colchicine as an immunosuppressive Unfortunately, the patient complained of low-grade fever 
and pain at the right groin through the regular follow-up. One month later, after discharge from the hospital, we have duplex ultrasound showing a patent graft with perigraft collection 5 by 10 cm, not responding to medical treatment. So the surgeon was exploration and evidence of infection was found. So graft extraction and ligation of the right common femoral, common iliac artery. And at the same time, we need to re revascularize the limb and avoid infection with extra anatomical femoral femoral bypass using a saphenous graft. One week later, unfortunately, we have a severe hemorrhage from donor and stomatic site. Exploration also with uh, evidence of severe site infection and excision of the graft was done and ligation of left common femoral artery. Severe wound infection at the left anastomotic site, our left donor site. Uh, conservative treatment was done two weeks, uh, two months later with regular follow-up. We have no signs of ischemia, of acute ischemia, biphasic, bilateral, anterior tibial and posterior tibial. And we have marvelous CT angiography. So, at the Journal of Egyptian Rheumatologist 2017, arterial involvement has been reported in patients with basic disease which mostly involve the main arteries in the form of pseudoaneurysm, aneurysm, and thrombotic occlusion. The same article says that perioperative immunosuppressive and corticosteroid medication are the key to the success of any vascular surgical procedure in patients with basic disease. Surgical treatment of angiopathy 2017 states that new endovascular techniques are showing a promising result for the treatment of arterial lesions, especially that open repair until a high risk of pseudoaneurysm formation at the anastomotic site. Best practice and research clinical rheumatology states that Addition of anticoagulant to prevent relapses of vascular involvement in basic disease has been an issue of debate. The same article states that in selected cases, ligation can give a satisfactory result. Nevertheless, post-operative claudication is frequent. So our conclusion, our arterial pseudoaneurysm is a life-threatening manifestation of vascular basic disease that always should be kept in mind to prevent major complications, especially in men with previous vein thrombosis. Thank you very much.